I said, the speaker said, a flowing, melodious manner of space depth and grouping together of words, sentences, or a painting on a canvas. Is that right? A melodious, a flowing, melodious manner of space, of depth, of grouping certain things together, trees, people, words. All that is a form of beauty, is a form of art. Do you agree to this at all? That is, if there is no space, if you see something, say a painting, I'm not, I hope somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. If you see a picture, a painting by the masters, classical masters, or recent ones, really great painters, there's space, a sense of space. The, the figure, figures are great, grouped together in a certain way. There is a certain depth to it in colour, in sense of movement, and it, may, it must be melodious. And that gives, when you see some of these paintings of landscape, this was, they may paint a little cottage in a field with few trees, but there's space and there's depth of colour, proportion, a sense of harmony, right? And that would be great painting. And one has visited, perhaps as you, you as a tourist, or most of the major museums of the world, and one sees all these great masters from Holland, Italy, England, America, and so on. So we are asking, what is beauty? Is beauty according to a principle, according to certain rules? You follow? Or beauty is something entirely different, though there must be proportion and all the rest of it. When we look at a mountain, there, when you see those mountains, those hills, range after range, blue in the evening, and early morning when the sun touches it, before everything else, when you see that, the reaction is either great silence, You keep quiet. The space, enormous space between you and that and beyond. And when you see such marvelous, beautiful mountains, snow clad against this blue sky, for an instant you become silent. The very beauty, the very grandeur, the, mag the majesty of a mountain keeps you, makes you absolutely quiet. Of 
can see the shock of her beauty. I hope you're looking with those mountains, not at me. The speaker is not important at all. But what he says may be important and may not be important. But you have to discover for yourself. So when you see something extraordinarily grand, of great height and depth and then the very shock, the shock of that beauty drives away for the moment all your problems. There is no self wondering, worrying, talking to itself. There is no entity, the self, the me, looking. At that moment when the Self is not, there is great beauty. And the questioner asks, what is the role of, the, of art in our lives? I don't know. <laughs> but we're going to find out together. Why should anything play a role? Please, this is an important question. Why should anything play a role in our life? The greatest art is the art of living. The greatest, not the paintings, the sculpture, the poems, and the marvelous literature that has its certain place. But To find out for oneself the art of living, that's the greatest art, surpasses any role in life. So some of the great painters in their lives are neurotic. Very, very disturbed lives, like Beethoven and others, very disturbed. And that disturbance perhaps may help them to write great music. Or if one led a life of aesthetic life, Am I going, are we following each other? Aesthetic life, and that life is based on, life is based on relationship. There is no life without relationship. And aesthetic is the capacity of perception, right? Are we meeting each other or am I just talking to myself? Capacity to perceive, which means one must be extraordinarily sensitive. And sensitivity is not shouting, yelling, but sensitivity comes from depth of silence, Shall I go on? It's no good going to colleges and universities to learn how to be sensitive. 
or go, go to somebody to teach you how to be sensitive. As we said, aestheticism is the capacity to perceive. And you cannot perceive if there is not a certain depth of silence. If you look at these trees in silence, there is a communication which is not merely verbal, but a communication, a communion with nature. And most of us have lost a rela- our relationship with nature. the trees, with the mountains, with all the living things of the earth. And sensitivity in our relationship, to be aware of each other, is that at all possible. That's the art of living, to find out a relationship that is not conflict, that's a a flow of melodious manner of living together. You understand? Without all the rows, quarrels, possessiveness and being possessed, fear of loneliness, you follow the whole cycle of human struggle. The art of living is far more important than the art of great painters. It may be that we are escaping through music from ourselves, through going to all the museums of the world and talking about them endlessly, reading about books and art. All that may be an escape from our own troubles, anxieties, depressions. So can we live an aesthetic life of deep perception, be aware of our words, be aware of the noise of this country, the vulgarity of human beings, because one learns far more in silence than in noise. These all may be sound platitudes, but they are not. This requires a great deal of observation of oneself. That observation is prevented by any form of authority, looking to another to teach us how to observe. Just to observe, watch the way you walk, the way you talk, the noise, the, you know, all that goes on. Then out of that comes the art of living. Art, as we said, is putting things together harmoniously. To observe the contradictions in oneself, 
one's desires that are always so strong. To observe all that, not create an opposite of it, just to observe the fact and live in the fact. That seem, it seems that's the way to bring about a life of melodious harmony. Have I, we answered the question? You don't so don't bother to clap. I don't know why you clap. Maybe you like to feel that we have said right things and you appreciate it, but. What the speaker has said is what you are thinking, I hope. Not therefore don't clap for the speaker. 